What's up everyone and welcome back to another new comic book day haul review video. Today I'm going to be going over my top 10 books for new comic book day, March 16th, 2022. I picked up 11 total issues this week, so one of them did not make the top 10 list and honestly the indies absolutely killed it this week. I cannot wait to talk about these books with you guys, but before I get started off on any of these new comics, if you are new to the channel, we have an incredible community here and if you want to grow with us, please consider hitting that subscribe button down low and turning notifications on so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming content and now without further ado let's get started on these new comics all right everyone i hope you're all having a fantastic day so far today and you were able to pick up all of your new comic book day books on time so i read everybody's comments from last week's video about whether i should continue on with a top 10 list if you want to see a more reviewed styled video and everyone seemed a little split so going forward what i'm going to be doing is continuing on with the top 10 list however I am going to be going more in-depth with these books as well as I talk about them. I'm going to be going over my opinions on them, what I liked, what I didn't like, the artwork, and just my overall thoughts. But you know what that means. There's definitely going to be spoilers with that too. But I'm going to put a little spoiler tag down low to give you a little heads up that a spoiler is going to be coming. So if you want to hear any of that, you can skip forward, you can skip to the next issue. And I appreciate all the feedback and you guys just bearing with me as I figure out how to put out the best possible content and what you guys actually want to see. So with that being said, this week was awesome. If you're an indie fan, this is absolutely your week. We had some incredible books come out. I cannot wait to talk about them. I picked up 11 total issues and one of them did not make the top 10 list. So here we go. This is the first issue. I'm going to be getting a little bit more in depth with this one. We've got images, Stillwater, The Escape, issue number one. This is kind of a one shot little tie into the main series. I was really hyped up for it. Because when I've been talking about the Stillwater series, I always said to myself, where can the series go? There's a lot of questions that I would like answered. And in the description for this one, it said all the questions you wanted, it's all going to be in this issue. They're going to explain some more things, get a little bit more in depth with it. And I didn't really like it at all, to be honest. I thought it was a boring issue. All it really consisted of was a bunch of short stories. It had some of the Stillwater members gather around a little fire and they were just telling stories about people who apparently escaped over the years. I didn't particularly want to hear the stories that were being told. I wanted just more answers to the town of Stillwater, how it all happened, why people can't die there. I guess overall why people can't leave either. And to me, just none of that was answered. They got in depth with some of the past people who have left. But like I said, overall, it really wasn't that great of a story to me. I want to hear your opinions on it down low. But now let's talk about the real top 10 list. All right, everyone, so I want to kick this top 10 list off first. We've got coming in at number 10. This is Marvel's The Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 92. This is cover A, and it's a Beyond tie-in, and I'm going to be honest with you, I did not like this one at all. And to be real, if I would have picked up 12 issues this week, I can almost guarantee this one would not have made the top 10 list either. The only reason this one did, compared to the Stillwater issue, is because that Stillwater issue truly did disappoint me. I had so much higher expectations. Maybe I put that on myself, but I just really wanted more. This one has kind of been a consistent letdown as of late anyway, so I really didn't have any expectations for it to begin with. However, with this series right now, with this one in particular, as of late, it's just felt so cheesy to me. The whole volume just had great development. We had Peter Parker, we had Ben Riley. We kind of had two separate stories while they still included the plot line of the Beyond Corporation in it as well. And as of late, it's felt so cheesy, including this one where they're calling Morbius Dr. Mike now. And then Monica Rambeau made an appearance in this one for some reason. I don't think she's been in this volume at all. Maybe I'm wrong on that one. But she decided to call herself Auntie Rambo or Auntie Monica, and I don't know. I really didn't like that one either. This one felt like it was kind of a couple small stories within just a Beyond Corporation plotline. Not for me. 100% skippable, in my opinion. If you're reading this volume and you thought, oh, the other times were good, but I forgot this one for some reason, you can skip it. It really wasn't that good. But for those reasons, we've got The Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 92, tie-in, coming in at number 10. And next up on my list this week, we've got coming in at number nine. This is Images. What's the furthest place from here? Issue number five. This is cover A. I'm putting it at number nine, not because it was a bad issue, but pretty much because nothing really happened at all. This was basically a continuation off of the last one, and it still has that Warriors vibe to me right now. I think I talked about that with the fourth issue, where all these different families are now meeting up. They're at this carnival. They're prepping for a big meeting to basically talk about what happened in the last couple issues. I don't want to spoil that for you if you're not caught up in the series. But now with this one, 
it was pretty much all action. Just a lot of the families were fighting with each other. They were dealing with the consequences of the stuff they've done over the last couple issues. We did see some other really cool stuff happen too, but outside of that, really no plot progression, really not a whole lot of stuff happened. We did get left on a nice cliffhanger though. So I'm excited for the sixth issue. I'm still sticking with this one. As of late, I have really liked it. I think starting at issue three and then four, I thought those were fantastic issues. I thought the meeting was actually going to be in this issue, which could have tied into my bias a little bit at putting it at number nine. I had a little bit higher expectations. It was still some cool action stuff and a little bit of other things happened, but I basically was just really excited to see where this meeting itself goes. So for those reasons, we've got what's the furthest place from here. Issue number five coming in at number nine. And next up on my list this week, we've got coming in at number eight. This is Boom Studios Basilisk issue number eight. This is cover A. This really wasn't a bad issue, but I was expecting more out of it. Not a lot of stuff happened at all. We barely had any action. There wasn't a lot of plot progression or storyline in this one. It was honestly just the characters kind of talking amongst themselves, trying to figure out where to go next or what to do next. And we've got our two main groups still. We've got Vanessa and her little cult that's following her that believes that she's a god. They're going their own way, but at the same time, now that she took the other Chimera's powers, she can still talk to Reagan and kind of give her clues as to where she is because, you know, we're gearing up for this big battle between them both. Speaking of that then, we have our other group still. We have Hannah and Reagan, and they're pretty much trying to figure out what to do next. Hannah is completely messed up from that latest battle, but she's still all about trying to take them down. Like I said before, we didn't get a lot of action, we didn't get a lot of story plot development, but something does happen towards the end. I want to leave it as a cliffhanger for you guys, because you got to read this one for yourself. I'm a big fan of this series. I think Colin Bunn is absolutely killing it, but the one thing I do love about this series right now is that the artwork just pairs so perfectly well with the story that he's trying to tell. Let's talk about this one down low, because honestly, I'm still talking to a lot of people who really aren't that big of a fan of this series. I am, though. So for those reasons, we've got Basilisk issue number eight coming in at number eight. Next up on my list this week, we've got coming in at number seven. This is Marvel's brand new ongoing series. We've got Carnage, issue number one. This is cover A. This is written by Rom V. I was really excited for this one. I was keeping my expectations pretty low. I mean, it's a new Marvel series. I typically don't go into them with a lot of high hopes. But you know, this one was pretty cool. I liked the way it started off. It seemed more like a detective series in the very beginning. From there, though, we got who the bad guy is or the, the killer that's looking for Carnage. So it wasn't a huge mystery, but that's kind of how it started off. But the one thing that I really didn't like about it is while I started to get into the story, all of a sudden we got left on to be continued. And it picked up with this kind of short story that was a couple pages. And then we capped the whole issue off with just this one page short story. So I think if they would have focused more on the actual Carnage issue itself and really developed the series a little bit more, maybe we saw who this detective was, we got a little background story on him, the killer itself, and in kind of the other things that Carnage has been up to, I would have been a little bit more drawn into this first issue. I really liked the artwork, I thought that was well done, but like I said, the one turnoff that I had on this was basically we got left on that to be continued for this little story that probably won't play a role into anything, and then we finished it all off with this little tiny one page thing that really didn't mean anything. I want to hear your opinions down low, but for those reasons, we've got Carnage issue number one coming in at number seven. Next up this week, we've got coming in at number six. This is Scout Comics' brand new series. We've got Playthings issue number one. This is cover A. I'm a big fan of Scout Comics. I love when they come out with a Black Caravan title. I usually try to pick them up every time they come out. This one wasn't on my poll list. I really didn't expect to be able to get it because at my shop, books like this, they're usually already pre-ordered. The ones that we get in are typically already slotted for people. So when I saw it on my shelf, I was like, yes, I'm definitely snagging this one. Did not let me down. I was a big fan of this first issue. The one thing I will say about it, though, is I really wasn't a big fan of the artwork. However, while it really wasn't for me, it went very well with the story that they were trying to tell. It was a dark, gritty story. And just the, the sketch artwork that was in this story, it worked well with it. Like I said, just not my type of artwork, but it did go well with the story. Now, the issue itself, we didn't really get an in-depth view of who these characters are. It kind of just jumped straight to the series itself. Pretty much where the story is going to be going, it jumped right to it. We've got, I guess, a couple main characters, but it focused on the mom and daughter the most. 
They don't really have a good relationship with the father or the new girlfriend, but out of nowhere, this clown kind of shows up. And because of the, all the fighting that was just happening before that between the mom, dad, brand new girlfriend, the mom thought that the dad dropped this clown off because she's very scared of clowns. As the series progressed, some weird things happen. It kind of seems straight out of a horror movie, but they find out that the clown is alive. That's where I'm going to leave this one. Like I said, it started off strong and just kept going on with the series. Highly recommend this one. Scout Comics has another good one on their hands. If you haven't checked out Scout, definitely do. They've got a lot of really good stuff. You guys know I'm a big horror fan. So if that's more up your alley, definitely check out their Black Caravan titles. They always have deals going on on their website as well. But for those reasons, we've got Playthings issue number one coming in at number six. And now we're down to the top five issues of the week we've got coming in at number five this week. We've got AWA's The Crimson Cage, issue number four. This is cover A. We've only got one issue left, and this issue set everything up. I thought the last issue was a great setup. It almost felt as though this one was kind of a fresh story after everything that happened from the last issue. It's not a completely new thing. We still have our two main characters. We've got Chuck Frenzy and his wife. But now with this one, everything that happened in the past about him getting kind of what he wished for about having the title, being top of the world for wrestling... This one was more of a, we're bringing everything down on him right now. They kind of explained to him that he's going to be losing the title in this big, massive crimson cage battle. And that's where everything clicked in his mind. And he said, no, I can't lose everything. This is what those witches were explaining to me. I love this issue. I love this series. John Lee's is a phenomenal writer. As always, AWA kills it. But for those reasons, we've got the crimson cage issue number four coming in at number five. Next up, folks, we've got coming in at number four. This is Image's new series. We've got Slumber, issue number one. This is cover A. This is another one that wasn't on my poll list. It was a very last second pickup. I remember doing the previews video on it. I remember the solicitation. I thought, you know what? It's probably going to be up my alley. And plus, when I saw the cover and it had all this gore on it, I thought, yeah, I'm definitely going to be picking this one up. As soon as I started reading it, it pulled me in immediately. Now, I don't want to call it kind of a knockoff story, but it really gave me some Nightmare on Elm Street vibes. So right now, we have a series of murders that are going on, but they can't figure out who's doing it. They have no idea. But all of the people who allegedly killed all these other people are saying, I don't remember what happened. I was sleepwalking, and I just kind of woke up, and here it is. So instead of pretty much Freddy Krueger killing the people in the dreams, it's this monster is coming to them in the dreams, and they have no idea what they're doing, and now they're actually killing the people. I thought it was an awesome story, but then from there, it kept getting better and better. So we have our detectives who are trying to figure out all these murders, but we also have this weird agency that gets hired to go into people's dreams to kill the monster that's kind of haunting their nightmares. I thought that was really cool too. We got some really off the wall artwork in this one. I loved it. I highly recommend this one. This is going to be such an awesome series from Image. Definitely check it out. But for those reasons, we've got Slumber issue number one coming in at number four. And now we're down to the final three issues of the week. We've got coming in at number three this week. This is Image's new one shot. We've got the Clay People Colossus issue number one. This is cover A. I didn't really know what to expect when I picked this issue up, but it was fantastic. As far as a one shot goes, this felt so complete. We just had a nice intro, background on all these characters, background on just what they were trying to accomplish. So we had a nice beginning, a nice middle, and the ending was extremely satisfying. I highly recommend this one. If you read a Blazes series, I believe it was called A Walk With Monsters or Walk With Monsters. It actually had kind of the same concept. It just didn't take place way back in the day. So with this issue, we have our main character. He's a brand new kid at this school and he gets made fun of. He gets picked on constantly by bullies, but these just aren't regular bullies. These are kind of more guys who are willing to actually go above and beyond and kill people and actually severely injure people as well. So he's trying to figure out how to just deal with these bullies without potentially getting killed. And he's got his grandfather. He's got this book from back when he was in a concentration camp and it summons this right here, the clay people, the golem. And that's what reminded me of the walk with monster series from Ablaze. This one though, from there, you know, he's got his book. He's trying to summon this golem. And as I said, it felt very complete. This was a very nice read and I really enjoyed the artwork. Work. If you did read this one, if you read the other series as well, let's talk about it down low. We can see, you know, the kind of the similarities between them, the differences. But seriously, if you had a light week or you're a big indie fan, you were kind of on the fence because it was a one shot. Definitely try this one out. But we've got coming in at number three, The Colossus. And next up this week, we've got coming in at number two. This is Scout Comics' new series. We've got Rad Wraith, issue number one. This is cover A. This is also from their Black Caravan. Scout Comics killed it this week on books. This issue was phenomenal. But before I get into the issue itself, this cover, 
the cover feels so good in your hands, just like the other one did. All Scout Comics Black Caravan stuff feels great when you're holding it. It just feels very quality. But this is a wraparound cover. It's extremely nice. The artwork was very well done, too. Just overall, I was a huge fan of this story. This one, though, I am going to be real. I might be a little biased when I talk about this one because, as you can tell from the front cover, our main character is a skateboarder. This isn't our main character, but I'm sure he's going to be playing a big role. But it's definitely a skateboarding issue. So if you grew up as a skateboarder, this one's definitely going to connect with you on a certain level. And our main character, he doesn't seem to be very good at skateboarding. And you know what? Neither was I. And that's why I didn't become a professional skateboarder and I gave up on it. So I definitely connected with this kid. And he gets made fun of. He got bullied because he wasn't as good as the other people. But he's doing what he can to try to fit in. That's where the story takes off. They basically give him an impossible task. And like I said, this is going to definitely be a spoiler. I don't want to get too much into it, though. You definitely need to read this one. But he gets extremely injured on it. And everybody pretty much says, oh, yeah, he died. But that's where the Rad Wraith comes in. We don't know a lot about this character just yet, but he's definitely a monster. And I don't know if maybe he's going to be sticking up for this skateboarding kid who's not very good. Or maybe now he's part of this kid. I'm excited for this series. I'm definitely going to continue on with this one. And I do recommend this one, especially if you grew up skateboarding. But for those reasons, we've got Rad Wraith issue number one coming in at number two. And this is it, everyone, my top read of the week. We've got coming in at number one this week. This is Images, The Silver Coin, issue number 10. This is cover A. I'm sure you guys already guessed it, that The Silver Coin was going to get number one. What is a top 10 video without The Silver Coin getting number one or number two? This is a phenomenal issue. I was a huge fan of it, pretty much just like the rest of the series. However, I always talk about this series saying, you know, you can kind of just pick it up. Every issue seems to be, you know, it focuses on the silver coin. You might miss some small things here and there. But for the most part, you can pick up pretty much any issue and just get an understanding as to where the story is going to be going. However, this one, this one focuses on the covenant. Just like from that last issue, I think it was maybe issue number six. This is part two of that one. We do have a fresh new group of characters. That one took place in the past, giving a little bit of an origin story of the silver coin. This one continued on with that, except it was in present time. We've got our main group, and something just kind of calls our main character out into the woods, and she gets presented the silver coin. But when it's presented to her, she thinks that if she does this ritual, it's going to release the souls. It's just going to, you know, break the chain. But instead... Her and her friends released something so much darker and just, it was such a fun read. This silver coin is hands down, probably my favorite ongoing from Image right now. Off the top of my head, I mean, there's a ton of great ones. We got the Department of Truth, Philadelphia is great, Nita Hawes is an upcoming great one too, but man... The silver coin never lets me down. You got to pick up the trade paperback. You got to find some of these back issues. But as I said earlier, this one is a part two continuation pretty much off of the covenant from, I believe, issue number six. Maybe it was issue number five. It was the end of the first arc. But with that being said, we've got absolutely taking the crown at number one, the silver coin issue number 10. So what do you guys think about this week's new comic book day? The indies, hands down, absolutely killed it this week. Image, as always, a phenomenal week. The Silver Coin, issue number 10, my top read of the week. Such a good series. I do highly recommend it. Scout Comics, you guys killed it too. AWA, you guys always kill it. I love your stuff. But definitely check out those Scout Comics books if you didn't already do so. And be sure to let me know down below in the comments section which books your top reads of the week were and which ones you think I missed out on. And thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you don't want to miss out on any of my upcoming content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down low and the little bell to get notified. Every time I drop new content, you won't regret it. And I've got two more videos sitting off the side here with more of my comic book content. Click on one of those and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.